Ayan. Cost concepts, classification and behavior, or cost terms, concepts, and behavior. So basic cost accounting concepts, balikan lang natin, we have three na napagpapalit minsan ng mga terms. So cost, expense, and loss. Pag sinabi natin cost, that could mean the amount measured in money, cash expended, or money uh, or other property transferred, capital, capital stock issued, services performed, or liability incurred in consideration of goods or services received or to be received. In other words, ito yung ating resources na nilabas kapalit ng goods or services na nareceive natin. Okay? But it doesn't mean na kapag nilabas natin itong mga cost na to, automatically ay expense na. Because yung mga expired cost lang ang mga tinatawag natin na expense. Dahil kung hindi pa expired yung cost natin, nandun pa yan sa balance sheet natin normally. Okay? And once expired yung cost, ito ay expense na. And these are deductible from the revenues. At kapag sobrang dami ng expenses natin, compared sa revenue natin, yun yung nakakaroon tayo ng loss. Okay, so those are the three concepts in basic cost accounting. Now, cost object pa as compared to cost accumulation and cost assignment na pagpapalit din natin minsan. So cost object is anything for which a separate measurement of cost is desired. And cost accumulation, yung pag-collect natin ng cost data in some organized way, uh, pwede yung through job order, pwede yung process costing, so through an accounting system. And cost assignment is the general term that encompasses both tracing at saka allocating yung cost to a cost object. Tracing and allocating yung terms natin. So, quick check lang before we proceed. Pag sinabi ba natin cost tracing, is it A, the assignment of direct costs to the chosen cost object? Or is it B, a function of cost allocation? Or is it C, the process of tracking both the direct and indirect costs associated with the cost object? Or is it D, the process of determining the actual cost of the cost object? Ayan. So ito kasi mga karaniwan nakakalituhan ng mga terms. Or is it uh, A, B, C, or D? Can I see your answers in our chat box? Hoy, ang dami pumili ng C. Parang ganda kasi pakinggan, no? Tracking both direct and indirect costs associated with the cost object. Parang siya rin pinakamahaba, no? Ganun ba tayo pumili kapag hindi sure? So the answer is, almost everybody answered for C, but the answer is A. Pag tracing ang term, we refer sa mga direct costs lang. Di ba nga ang definition natin ng direct cost traceable to the product kaya nga siya cost tracing that is the assignment of the direct cost pag sinabi natin kasi babalikan lang natin definition kanina di ba dalawa isa tracing allocating pag allocating that refers to indirect cost na pag tracing it refers to direct cost okay assignment of direct cost and in their records. I hope clear na po tayo sa mga terms na yun by this time. Okay, ito, cost assignment ang tawag dyan kasi parehas. Pero pag ito, tracing. Pag ito, allocating. Malinaw po ah. So let's proceed. Classification of cost. Just to review what we have learned in cost accounting and cost control. Pag pinag-usapan natin yung classification by category, as to time of charges against revenue, Product versus period cost. Kailan ba charge ang product cost? Kailan ba charge ang period cost against revenue? Ang period cost, charge against revenue when incurred. Kapag nangyari, pag na-incur na, that would be reported immediately as expense. Pero ang product cost, pag na-incur, hindi pa. Kailan siya nagiging na-charge against the revenue? Kapag ang products ay sold when the products are sold that's the only time that it will be charged against the revenue ease of traceability nasabi natin easily traceable ang direct hindi ang indirect okay pag-usapan natin ulit mamaya ano pa ba natin malalaman kung direct or indirect 
as a management function, parang itong product and period din. Kaya lang, mas naka-breakdown lang. So, A is manufacturing applied to producing a product. Parang siya din si product cost, no? Pero depende sa management function. Kung function is on the marketing or the cost in selling the product, or is it part of administrative cost in policy making activities, or baka naman yan ay financial cost. Di ba ang income statement natin? Sales. Minus cost of goods sold. O, nandiyan yung mana sa manufacturing, di ba? So we have the gross profit. Minus the OPEX. Ano ba yung part ng OPEX? Ito po yun. Yung marketing at saka administrative. Yung dalawa na yan. Sa OPEX yan. So we have the uh, operating income. Sometimes we call it EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes. At itong operating income natin, dito pa lang natin yung ma-minus yung interest. So magkakaroon, tawagin natin ng EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. So magiging ano na to EBT, earnings before taxes, minus the taxes, that's the time that we can have our net income. Itong interest na to ito naman yung financial costs na tinutukoy natin dito, related to financial activities. Okay? So those are the classification of costs per category. So I, I have mentioned earlier the difference between the product cost and period cost. So kapag na-incur natin, sama muna siya sa inventory. Work in process inventory. Kapag manufacturing, di ba? Um, raw materials inventory. Pag inisyo mo sa production, maging work in process inventory. Later on, pag nakompleto na, maging finished goods inventory. Pero nasa inventory pa rin siya, nasa balance sheet siya muna. Once na benta, yung product cost natin, that's the time na pupunta na siya sa income statement as our cost of goods sold. Compared to period cost, it includes all selling costs and administrative costs at ine-expense agad at makikita na sa income statement once incurred. Okay. Oops, ayun mo rito. Ayan. Classification of manufacturing costs lang. Just to recall, we have the direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. I hope malinaw na sa atin yung difference sa mga yan. Just, but just to go uh, quick lang, direct materials, yung mga, pra, yung mga materials na ginagamit natin which are traceable to the product. Pag sinabi mo traceable, hindi lang siya physically traceable but economically traceable. Meaning, easily traceable sa product. Atin. Sometimes may romance tayo na ginagamit dyan pero hindi siya part ng direct materials. One good example, when we come up with our uh, furnitures and pictures yung mga table natin. Ang table, ang direct materials natin dyan ay yung wood. Pero yung, yung nails o kaya wood glue, materials pa rin sila but they do not form part significantly in terms of cost dun sa product natin. And that goes to indirect materials. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, pag direct materials, dapat significant din yung cost natin. Sa gamit natin, ang mga materials dyan ay yung tela. Pero yung tela, uh, ay tela, ano pa ba? Yung sinulid, butones, kung polo shirt. Pero yung tela, yun yung direct materials. Pero yung sinulid, yung butones, dahil insignificant naman yung amount dyan, that goes to indirect materials. Okay? And indirect materials form part of your overhead. So, indirect materials. Okay? Direct labor naman, alam natin na yung direct labor, yun yung compensation. Yun yung mga nare-receive ng mga direct laborers natin. Yung mga uh, directly involved in the conversion of your raw materials into finished goods. So, kung meron mga mga tao na, na nandun din sa factory pero hindi sila yung mismong magko-convert, they form part of your indirect labor such as the supervisor, the managers of the factory, etc. Okay? But of course, general, generally speaking naman yung mga na kapag direct laborers, mga factory workers, lahat na nare-receive nila generally nasa direct labor. May mga exceptions to the rule. Iiwanan ko na yun sa cost accounting and cost control. Pero one good example ay yung mga overtime, premium, etc. Okay? Sa so manufacturing overhead naman, minsan tinatanong sa exam, magkano daw ang manufacturing overhead? Ang dami-daming costs na nakalista, pero sinamarize lang natin into period. Ano ba yung mga overhead na yan? Ang T natin is for 
the taxes. The property taxes that we pay dahil may mga PPE tayo na nandun sa ating uh, production area. I-4, nasabi na natin kanina, indirect materials, indirect labor, at yung mga insurance expired portion only. Okay? So insurance ng PPE, insurance ng inventory, pero yung expired portion only. If you are considering for a quarter, tas ang insurance mo is for 12 months, so it's only 3 over 12 that will form part of your overhead na insurance. Okay? Letter R for rent. Diba? To come up with the product, we need the rent. And repairs and maintenance. Siyempre yung machines natin, it has to be repaired and maintained kapag hindi na nagpa-function ng mabuti. Lahat ng yan ay part pa rin ng overhead. U for utilities. Alam na alam na natin yan. Without the electricity, water, and other utilities, possibly we cannot come up with our product. And D for depreciation. But Alam na natin to na depreciation lang that pertains to the PPE inside the factory. Pag pinag-usapan natin yung overhead ng uh, product. Now, meron lang O minsan, other overhead cost. Kaya makikita mo sa exam na pangaraming cost, hanapin mo yung period. Yan na po halos lahat yung overhead doon. Okay. So, direct cost, sabi natin, cost classification. The records, the cost that can be easily, dapat easily ah, and conveniently traced to so a unit of product or other cost object. So in terms of the product, direct materials and direct labor po yun. In direct cost naman, cannot be easily and conveniently traced a unit of product. So ang example ay overhead. Okay. Yung non-manufacturing cost, medyo quick lang tayo ha, kasi review lang siya ng uh, cost accounting and cost control. Non-manufacturing cost, for part of your OPEX kapag uh, ginagawa na natin yung ating income statement, these are your selling costs and administrative costs. These are necessary to secure the order and deliver the product, yung mga selling costs naman. Pag-admin, kasama dito yung sweldo ng mga... Uh, misa tayo mga accountants at saka yung mga executive and organizational and clerical costs. So dyan po kasama sa administrative cost. Alright? O oh, quick check lang ha. Uh, which of the following costs would be considered a period rather than a product cost in a manufacturing company? company? Which of the following costs would be considered a period rather than a product cost in a manufacturing company? Patingin nga. Sabi ba E, B, may C. Ayan. Tingnan natin. O yun, buti nakita ng iba na hindi lang pala isa ang sagot. May dalawang sagot. B at saka E. Okay. So, manufacturing equipment depreciation, kasama po yan sa tirud, di ba? So, that's part of overhead. Okay. At saka yung depreciation ng manufacturing equipment ng tinutukoy. Letter B, proper, property taxes on corporate headquarters. So that's part of the administrative cost. DM, nako malino na malino na product cost na yan. Letter D, electrical cost to light the production facility. So that would be part of your utility sa period natin. And sales commissions. Basta nakita mo sales commission, alam mo na ito na kagad ay selling Cost. Okay, so there are two answers, B and E. Sa exam, totoong exam, isa lang ang answer, pero sa discussion, sometimes there could be more than one answers. Ha? Yan. So, classification of course, to classify further. So, degree of averaging, pwede naman ang usapan. Ito po, ingatan po natin na minsan uh, nagko-compute tayo, total cost, unit cost, hindi consistent. So, make sure that if we are using total cost, tingnan natin kung talagang total cost ba yung dapat gamitin or unit cost. Time when computed, is it uh, pre-computed or uh, is it predicted or is it historical? Relation to the product, is it a prime cost or is it a conversion cost? I hope you can still remember the difference between the two. And yung mamaya, yung focus ng computation natin, yung behavior in relation to fluctuations in volume or activity or level of production. It's either variable, 
fixed or mixed cost. Okay. Ang prime cost ay DM plus DL, direct materials plus your direct labor. Ang conversion cost naman ay DL plus your OH. From the term itself, conversion cost. Ano ba yung convert mo? Yung DM. Ano ba yung pang-convert mo? Yung DL plus OH. So, kinoconvert mo yung DM para maging finished goods. Kaya nga tinawag siyang conversion cost. Okay? Let's move. Ayan. As the behavior, variable, fixed, and mixed cost. Ano ba yung difference ng dalawa? Okay. Uh, pwede ba na merong uh, magsalita muna sa atin kung ano ba ang difference? Pwede lang ng isa dito sa tatlo na to para masabi kung ano ba ang variable cost, ano ba ang fixed, ano ang mixed. Isa lang ang pipiliin. Can, can somebody uh, define or ikwento sa amin ano ba ang variable cost ulit? Or ako ba magtatawag o may mag-volunteer? Okay, Ryan. Uy, Ryan. Mga Ryan talaga. Ryan Kadigal. Yes. Ang variable cost... Good morning. Good morning po, sir. Yung variable cost po, siya po yung cost na directly... Ah, na may direct relationship po sa volume ng production po. Ibig sabihin? Which means na... Which means kapag nag-i-increase po yung unit of production, nag-i-increase din po yung variable costs. Alright. And kabalik tara naman pag nag-decrease. No? Alright. So who else? Rico. Nagtaas din ang kami si Rico. Hi, sir. Hi, Rico. Sir, good morning po. Narinig po. Yes po. po. Sir, yung fixed cost po, sir. Sir, ano po, kung sa variable po, nakavary po siya sa production, So, yung fixed cost naman po is fixed lang po yung amount. In terms of cost po, sir, kahit po mataas yung, ano, mataas yung production or mababa, fixed lang po yung, pagbaba, yung, yung amount na, na i-charge po, sir. Kagaya po yung depreciation in straight line method. Pero in terms of fixed cost per unit naman po, sir, as the production increases, the fixed cost per unit decreases po. Naka-inverse naman po yung relation niya. Ayun po, sir. Thank you po. All right And meron bang gusto mag-explain ng uh, mixed cost? Huwag na, no? From the term itself, pag mixed cost, pinagsamang fixed as a variable cost. So, yung behavior ng fixed at behavior ng variable na sinabi ni Rico and Ryan ay nandun sa mixed cost. And that is the problem actually ng mga mixed cost. Kasi <clears throat> kung lahat ng cost mo ay variable, ibig sabihin, sa susunod na period, alamin mo lang kung ilan ang ipoproduce mo, i-multiply mo lang yung variable cost per unit, alam mo na yung total cost na kailangan mo i-prepare. Alam mo yung pondo, alam mo yung budget na kailangan mo i-ready. Kung lahat ng cost ay fixed, kahit ano pa lang mangyari, sabi nga ni Rico, kahit anong mangyari sa level of activity mo, kung alam mo na fix ang cost mo, you, just, you always have to prepare lang the same amount of budget. Pero kapag mixed cost kasi, yung behavior niya, hindi mo masyado mag-predict. Kaya ang ginagawa natin dito, since ang mixed cost, ang total cost ay fixed cost plus variable cost, sineseparate natin itong total cost into fixed and variable component. In that way, mapapredict natin magkano kaya yung total cost if ever sa susunod na period, ganito karami ang ipoproduce natin. Ayan. Pero syempre, yung separation ng mixed cost, hindi naman siya ganun ka-accurate yung mga methods natin. Yun ay ginamit lang natin just to estimate yung ating uh, total cost. Okay, just to illustrate, variable cost, sabi nga ni Ryan, uh, ito ah, uh, texting bill. So, number of texts sent on the x-axis, on the y-axis, axis, total texting bill. The more texts that you send, the more texting bill or the higher the texting bill is. So, pag tinignan mo naman, yung per text niya, it is still 5 cents per text. Ibig sabihin, it does not change. Kaya ganito po itsura ng line natin. Kapag per unit po ang pinag-uusapan natin. Kaya tama si Ryan kanina na ang variable cost, constant siya per unit but it varies directly with the number of units. Ayan. At ang mga usual na cost driver natin in, in a production, So that would be pwedeng iba based on the number of units produced 
Yung iba naman, kung dependent sa machine, based on the number of machine hours, kung labor intensive yan, it could be based on the uh, number of labor hours, or sometimes tracking or shipping company pala yan. So it depends on the miles driven, depende po sa kung ano yung appropriate na cost driver. Ibig sabihin, ito yung uh, a measure of what causes the incurrence of a variable cost. Makikita mo naman kung ano yung appropriate na driver na gagamitin natin. Okay? Usapang fixed cost, sabi naman ni Rico, uh, yung bill mo sa phone, kahit na ilan minutes ang gamitin mo sa pagtawag, it will still be the same. Fixed po kasi siya. Fixed cost, big sabihin, constant in, total. Pero pag tininan mo, sabi nga ni uh, Rico, ni, tama ni Rico, habang dumadami yung number of unit, minutes used mo, mas na ma-maximize mo actually yung fixed cost mo. Yung fixed cost per unit mo, mas bumababa. And it varies inversely with the changes in activity. Yan. So pag-usapan lang natin yung mga types of fixed cost. May mga fixed cost po tayo na committed. Na whatever happens, you are obliged to pay or to incur yung mga yan. Number one, the depreciation ng building's equipment. Talaga hindi mo mapipigilan mag-depreciate ang ating equipment, ang ating buildings. Real estate taxes. We are obliged, we are committed to pay for the real estate taxes. Discretionary. So this may be altered in the short term by, by current management decisions. So depende sa management kung i-incur niya ito o hindi. Number one, advertising. May mga companies na hindi naman nag-advertise pero nakakapag-operate naman sila na maayos. Pero of course, ang benefit kasi of advertising your product, that would reach more customers. So more sales probably. Pero in management accounting, dapat pag nagdagdag ka ng cost ng advertisement, dapat yung benefit niyan ay mas mataas pa kesa sa cost ng advertisement or kahit equal man lang para ma-continue mo yung advertisement na yan. Research and development. Ito ay isa sa mga napapabayaan ng ibang companies. Look at what happened with Nokia. Di ba? Kinain ang husto ng Samsung at Apple. But there were, there were uh, years na talagang Nokia ang number one na nagpo-provide ng phone sa lahat. Ewan ko kung meron pa kayo naabutan ng mga Nokia phones. Ewan ko kung may nakita pa kayong Nokia phones talaga. Pero nag-try naman bumalik ang Nokia lately. Pero hindi pa rin nag-succeed. Pero it's always Samsung and uh, Apple na talaga nag-succeed sa, ano, sa industry na to. And ano ang key? Bakit sila nag-succeed? Because of their research and development. They do not stop from innovating. Kumaga parang uh, sabi nga ng mga philosophers, if you do not innovate, you will evaporate. Tulad na nangyari kay Nokia. Kita mo si Samsung, kakalabas lang niya ng, at saka si Apple, kakalabas lang nila ng bagong model, may iPhone, ano na naman nalalabas, o di ba kakabili mo lang sa kanila ng bago, so papalitan na naman ng bago. So ibig sabihin, they keep on reinventing, they keep on innovating. One another example na medyo malaking lesson learned, pagdating sa kape, bilang tayong mga BSA at mga accountants mahilig magkape, ang number one coffee dito sa Pilipinas or number one coffee usually, ito talaga sasabihin natin, Nescafe. Pero there was a time when Coffee Co. took over. Okay, kailan kaya? Anong kape ba yung nagpa, nagbigay kay Coffee Co.? na chance na matook over niya na matake over niya yung net si Nescafe yun yung na-introduce yung brown coffee ni Coffee Co kasi si Nescafe syempre number one siya medyo nakampante siya na medyo nakampante si Nescafe na lagi naman siya number one talagang people will buy the coffee from Nescafe pero si Coffee Co nag-invent ng brown coffee na unahan niya mag-introduce si Nescafe. So there was a time when Coffee Co. took over yung place ni Nescafe. Pero sabi ni Nescafe, I have all the resources. Kayang-kaya ko lampasan ulit si Coffee Co. Kaya si Nescafe nagkaroon ako na anong flavor. May mga uh, dewberry, mga kung anong flavor si Nescafe. At again, na-regain niya yung position. Research and development is very important 
sa lahat ng kumpanya at iyan ay fixed cost na discretionary na pwedeng wala, pwedeng meron pero napaka-importante. Hindi porket discretionary ay hindi na importante. But sometimes the companies do not have enough resources para dito sa mga discretionary na mga uh, costs. Anyways, enough for that. So sabi ng ano, ko-compare lang natin yung yung uh, cost total cost behavior according sa mga economists at saka sa mga accountants. Sa so, economy, sabi niya, linear, curve linear ang cost function, hindi naman talaga sa straight line. 'Di ba pag nag-high low method kayo nung dati, parang na-assume niyo na straight line yung, yung cost function, pero ang totoo, curve linear siya. Dito ngayon papasok yung idea ng relevant range. Lagi niyo na rerenix sa relevant range. Pero ano ba talaga ibig sabihin ng relevant range? Ayan. Si accountant kasi, ina-assume niya na straight line na straight yung straight line approximation kung saan mukhang straight lang talaga yung line natin sa kung saan lang sa mukhang straight doon lang yung relevant range natin. Ibig sabihin, yung cost function na binanggit ni Ryan at Rico kanina na hindi magbabago ang variable cost per unit at hindi magbabago ang total cost in total. Doon lang siya valid within the relevant range. So pag tinignan mo, pagdating kasi dito, nag-curve na masyado yung ating line. Ito rin, nag-curve na dito. Kaya ina-assume ng accountant, from this point, itong point na to, up to this point, we can assume na straight yung line natin. Huwag tumibag yung division, pero almost straight yung line natin. Kaya sabi ni accountant, dito lang valid yung ating cost function within the relevant range because this one is outside the relevant range this one is outside the relevant range pero hindi na ba natin masasolve yung yung para dito sa mga ito pwede naman magkaroon ka uli ng separate na relevant range so ibig sabihin kung ilan man yung relevant range na meron tayo iba-iba yung cost function natin doon pero as far as we accountants are concerned in-identify natin na talagang merong certain range na we can assume na straight yung line, meaning valid yung ating uh, cost functions. Alright. And just to recap, yung cost classification for predicting cost behavior, yung identify natin kanina. So, variable cost in total, total variable cost increase or decrease in proportion to changes in the activity level. Per unit, variable cost per unit remains constant. Pero pag fixed cost naman, inunit lang natin, total fixed cost is not affected by changes in the activity level within the relevant range. Importante po ah, yung relevant range sa term. Fixed cost per unit decreases as the activity level rises and increases as, as, as the activity level falls. In other words, ang variable cost ay may direct relationship with the number of units. Ang fixed cost ay may inverse naman per unit. Inverse relationship. So yan usually yung makikita mo sa mga exams na ang variable cost ay constant per unit pero ang fixed cost naman ay constant in total. Okay. Which of the following costs would be variable with respect to the number of cones sold at Alan's Ice Cream Shop? Sige nga. Which of the following costs would be variable with respect to the number of cones sold at Alan's Ice Cream Shop? Is it A, the cost of lighting the store? Is it B, the salary of the store manager? Is it C, the cost of ice cream? Or D, the cost of napkins for customers? Actually, napkins po ay tissue. Ha? Baka, alam niyo na. So, may I know your answers? Okay, sabi nung iba C, sabi nung iba D, iba C and D. Again, there could be more than one answer, pero maaring isa lang din talaga ang sagot. So let's reveal. The answers are the cost of ice cream and the cost of napkins for customers. The cost of light in the store is generally considered as fixed. The utilities. The salary of the store manager I consider the fixed. Actually, pag sinabi mong salary, that's automatically a fixed cost. Dahil pag sinabi mong wages, that is a variable cost. Okay? 
Kaya pag sinabi mong salaries and wages, ibig sabihin ito ay mixed cost. Dahil ito ay fixed. Ito ay uh, variable. Okay? Of course, number of cones sold, it depends on the number of ice, on the cost of ice cream. I mean, the cost of ice cream uh, is dependent on the number of cones sold with direct relationship. And syempre, mas maraming mabentang cones ng ice cream, mas maraming tissues na magagamit for the customers. Alright? So you are correct, C and D. Pakitandaan po ah, cost of life in the store ay fixed cost. Ang utilities, ang behavior niya generally ay fixed cost. Alright, so here is your uh, graph for mixed cost. Total utility cost, activity kilowatt hours. Ito po yung total cost natin. Tapos, ito yung variable cost natin. Variable cost per kilowatt hour. Ito po yung difference ng mixed cost up to this line. Kasi itong line na to ay para sa fixed cost naman po. Okay? Ayan. Kung baga, para ito ko na rin, drawing ko lang ha. Pag wala kang in-incur, variable cost mo zero. Pero habang nag-incur ka, tumataas po yan. So variable cost. Ang fixed cost mo, wala kang na-incur, ito yung fixed cost mo. Meron ka pa rin may in I mean, wala kang pinoduce or wala kang uh, na-consume na kilowatt hours, ito pa rin yung fixed cost mo. Mag-consume ka na kahit ilan, diretso pa rin yung fixed cost mo na yan. Kaya, nung kinumbine yung dalawa na yan, dito po yan, mag a lagi. So, parallel kay variable cost, yung mixed cost natin or yung total cost natin. Parallel kay variable cost. Kasi ang constant na na add sa kanya ay yung fixed cost. Kaya ang tsura niya ay ito po. Ito yung total mixed cost, ito yung fixed cost. Okay. Now, just to summarize the types of cost classification, as of financial reporting, we have the product cost and we have the period cost. We also have as to uh, function, we have the manufacturing, administrative, we have the marketing, the financial costs. Okay, And predicting cost behavior, what do we have, what do we have here? We have the uh, variable mix and fix. Fix and mix, okay? And assigning cost to cost objects, we have direct or indirect. So, yun yung mga general na mga categories for the cost classification. And this time, dire-direcho na tayo sa mga activities and I would be uh, requesting everyone to uh, have your calculator beside you and before that, some true or false muna. Okay. Number one, the costs incurred in one year are always meaningful in the following year. So I need you to write one space your answer. <clears throat> costs incurred in one year can be uh, are always meaningful in the following year. Okay, thank you for your answer. We are all correct. So far, all that I saw, your answer correct. For that, false. Number two, so manufacturing overhead includes direct material, direct labor, and other indirect costs. Number two is also false. All right. So let's go to number three. Discretionary fixed costs are not necessary to successful operation of the business. Grabe naman to. Ako nang sasagot po ah. For this one, of course, it's false. Hindi po yan totoo. Pag-usapan na natin sa research and development kanina. Okay? So sabi na number four. Discretionary costs should be the first ones cut in a cost reduction program. Is it true or false? Discretionary naman. Are these the first ones cut in a cost reduction program? Number four is, oops, some answered true, some answered false. The answer is false. Hindi po yun priority sa cost reduction program. 
Sometimes, ito yung isa sa pinaka-importante tulad ng research and development. We need to advertise pala. Yun na lang yung magsasalba sa company. You can reduce other things, pero baka ito na lang. Pero I'm not saying na ito dapat ang mauna. Pero there is no rule that it should be the first one, Scott. Okay? Direct costs are often uh, difficult to trace to the specific cost object under consideration. Answer number five. False, false, false. And you are correct. Okay, let's go to number six. When the physical association of raw materials with a finished product is too small to trace in terms of cost, they are usually classified as indirect materials. Again, for number six. When the physical association of raw materials with a finished product is too small to trace in terms of cost, they are usually classified as indirect materials. Number six, can I see your answer? All right, parang common na answer. It's true. Correct, correct, correct. So number seven, thread used in the production of mattresses is classified as direct material. Number seven, oops, we are, I'll just continue, ah. I can see uh, most of the answers. Actually, lahat naman ay nagkakasundo, and that is really false. Ayan, number eight, uh, let's go to number eight, ah. just keep on answering. The cost of goods sold of a manufacturing company equals beginning finished goods inventory plus cost of goods available for sale minus ending finished goods inventory. Number eight, false, false, false. Very good. That is false. Mali po yung cost of goods available for sale, but it should be cost of goods manufactured. All right, so let's go to number nine. Product costs are deducted from revenue when the production process is completed. Product costs are deducted when the production is completed. Nine I, all right, very good. Nine, let's reveal the answer. Correct, false. Number 10, product costs appear on financial statements only when products are sold. Products appear on financial statements only when the products are sold. Then, false, true, false. Ayan, ako na-divide na ang, ang section. Some answered for true, some answered for false. The answer is false. Kasi ang protocols nasa balance sheet kapag hindi pa nabibenta. Nasa income statement pag nabenta. So, hindi totoo na nasa FS lang siya kapag sold. Pero pag ito'y pinalitan na product costs appear on income statement only when products are sold, yun na yung tama. Alright, so be careful with that. Ayan. All of the following are examples of opportunity costs. A. Ah, hindi pala A. The first one is salary given up to start a business. Rental income given up when you live in a house you own. Or, and uh, interest expense that could be incurred when you purchase your car on a cash basis. <clears throat> Pag sinabi mo opportunity cost, these are the benefits foregone from choosing one alternative over the other. Merong na let go kasi pinili mo tong isa. So what is your answer in number 11? Eleven is oops, false, false, false. Now, what made the statement wrong? Ali na malidito. Benefits for gun. Dapat benefits yung nawala. Benefits yung for gun. So salary given up. Benefit naman yan. Kasi nag-start up ka ng business. 
Rental income given up. Kasi tumira ka na lang sa bahay mo, hindi mo na pinarentahan. So, nang wala yung rental income. Interest expense. Ito yung na let go or na save mo na expense kasi nag cash basis ka. But the problem is, hindi siya benefit. Diba? It's a cost saved from choosing the cash basis over the installment method. If that's the case, it's not called as opportunity cost but instead opportunity income or opportunity revenue. So there's a difference between the two. So be careful with that. Meron opportunity income po, yung last. Yung dalawa, opportunity cost. All right. Number 12. A variable cost is constant if expressed on a per unit basis. But the total peso amount changes as the number of units increases or decreases. Ang magkamali sa number 12, ibabalik ko sa pinanggalingan. Hindi naman, joke lang. 12, true. Alright. Aabang ba ako kung sino magpo-false? And you are correct. The answer is true. Okay. So let's continue. High, low, scatter diagram, and regression analysis are methods of developing formulas to predict mixed costs. Huwag niyo nasagutin. Ako nasasagot sa number 13. And that is, ba tayo lumabas? True. Okay. Introduction ko na ito. Pagpunta na tayo sa, ano, sa problems. In the first step, ah, ito na lang sagutin natin, number 14. Just to review, ah, magkaalaman tayo. The first step in high-low method is to choose the highest and lowest costs incurred. Number 14, can I see your answers? Ang magkamali, ibabalik ko talaga sa, naku po, may mga na, magkakaiba ng sagot. But it's okay, sige. Hanapin ko kasi may babalik ko sa ano. Sa pinanggalingan niya sa cost. Alright. Yun, nakita ko ng ilan. The answer is false. It's not the highest and lowest cost. Anong unang hinahanap? Highest and lowest levels of activity. Tapos, tsaka mo hanapin yung cost at highest level. At tsaka yung cost at lowest level. And sometimes, yung... Uh, highest level, hindi yung wala, hindi sa kanya napunta yung highest cost. Ang tawag doon ay yung sa mga highest cost pero hindi naman highest level, ang tawag doon ay outlier na. Okay? Ang unang titignan ay level ng activity, not the cost. Okay? And number 15, do not answer anymore. A multiple regression equation uses more than one driver more than one driver to predict cost. The answer is true. Okay? So let's have some problems here. So please get your calculators and I need you to, to, put, uh, to uh, put in the chat box yung answer ninyo sa mga problems. Ano lang muna, mga short na problems muna yung, yung gagawin natin. Okay? For uh, the first one is for one minute. Eh dahil tanong, dalawa yung tanong, 2 minutes po muna. Okay? Here is the problem. So during the month of April, direct labor cost total 13,000 and direct labor cost was 20% of prime cost. During August, the total manufacturing cost were 88,000. Bakit April tas naging August, no? Oh, basta mag isang buwan lang po yan. Same month yan. So calculate the total prime cost and the total manufacturing overhead. So you have two minutes to answer. Okay? Nako, parang sabi ng iba, tagal naman ng two minutes. Kasi andyan yung answer sila. Okay, let's answer the problem. Calculate the total prime cost. Pag sinabi mong prime cost, so that would be DM plus DL. Meron ka naman DL, di ba, na binigay? That's 13,000. Okay, so meron kang 13,000 here. And then direct labor was 20% of prime cost. So to get the prime cost, ibig sabihin this consists of 20%. So prime cost is equal to 13,000 divided by 20%. So that would be 65,000. So with that, 
Number one is 65 topside. Okay. Overhead ang tinatanong ng sumunod. So, di ba meron tayong total manufacturing cost? Ang TMC natin ay DM, DL, and your overhead, that would be the total manufacturing cost. 88,000 daw po yan. So, ang DM natin ay makukuha naman natin dito. Actually, ito pwede na natin summarize into prime cost na 65,000. Yung OH ang nawawala, which is 23,000. And you are correct. 23,000 ang answer sa number 2. Ayan. Thank you very much for your answers. Okay, let's go to number 2. This one, oops, balik man tayo. This one, yung number 2, uh, I'll give you 3 minutes for this. 3 minutes maximum. So, the account, accounting records of 7RS company revealed the following costs. Okay, we are asked to calculate for the direct cost, total manufacturing overhead cost, and total cost conversion. Total cost conversion cost. Only to the cost. Okay, go. Okay, so let's answer this problem. We are asked to compute for the, the total direct cost. So, lahat ng direct cost, lagay po natin dito. Direct materials used, yes, so that's 50,000. Factory utilities, direct cost ba yan? No. Wages of assembly line personnel, kasama ba yan sa direct cost? Yes, that's part of your direct labor. DL po siya. Okay. So, customer entertainment, direct cost? No. Indirect materials use? No. Depreciation? No, that's overhead. Production equipment, rental cost? That's overhead. So, the answer is 120,000. The next question is overhead. So, siyempre, pag direct cost na hindi na siya, overhead. Tanong, utilities, direct cost ba yan? Yes, 35,000. About the customer entertainment? No, that's not overhead. Indirect materials use? Yes, that's 19,000. About the depreciations on salesperson's cars? That's, depre de that's depreciation, but that's not part of the period kasi ito ay salesperson's cars. So, in the, so then 110,000 for the production rental. So, the total is 164,000. So, you are correct. We are now asked for the conversion cost, BM and your DL. So, magkano yung BM and your DL? Ay, conversion cost, overhead pala rather. So, OH na natin, eto na, yung OH natin, 164. Ang DL natin, 170. 170. So, DL plus OH, that's 170,000 plus 164,000. So, that's 334,000 pesos. Okay. I just uh, feel na talagang uh, ma maalam na maalam na tayo sa cost accounting and control kasi our review is very fast. So that's very good so far. Let's go to problem number three. We have three questions here and I'm giving you three minutes to answer for this one. Go. Okay, let's answer. So the first question is, we are asked to compute for the... Uh, prime cost. So prime cost is equal to DM plus your DL. Ang haba ng problem, pero uh, you just have to get what you need. For your DM, you have to get the DM use. Sinabi na po dito sa problem that during the month, the company made raw materials purchases amounting to 89 and used 77,000. So siya na agad yung gagamitin natin. Plus, the direct labor na, sinabi na rin dito, it's 44 so, ito na kagad yung prime cost natin. Just get what you need. So, the answer is 121,000. That's for number one. For number two, we are asked for the conversion cost. So, we just have to add the DL and your OH. So, your DL is 44,000. Plus, yung overhead natin ay 91,000. Binigay na rin naman talaga. So, it's 135,000. Ayan. The number three, we're asked to compute for the inventory to be presented in the financial position. So, kasama po lahat ng inventory natin. So, direct materials, work in process, and finished goods inventory. 
Magkano inventory natin for materials? Sinabi po dito, it's either we compute na beginning plus purchases minus ending equals raw materials used. Pero good thing about this problem, binigay na niya lahat. Sabi niya dito, at the end of the month, the balance in the raw materials inventory account was 52,000. Ayan. And the work in process at the end is uh, at the end is 39,000. And the finished goods inventory in the end uh, was 78,000. So with that, ang total po natin ay 169,000. So that would be your total cost of inventory to be presented in the financial position. Okay? So that would be for problem number three. Let's go to problem number four. We are asked to compute for the total variable and total fixed cost. So I'll give you one minute to solve for this one. I'm going to be So that's very good. So just one minute after I've read the problem. So some selected sales and cost data for RC or company are given below. Okay, we are asked to compute for the total variable cost and total fixed cost. So time starts now. Okay, so we are asked to compute for the variable cost and fixed cost. So for your variable cost and for your fixed cost, separate na natin agad. So DM use, that's 200,000 na variable cost daw lahat. And for indirect materials cost, variable cost lahat, so that's 70,000. And then direct labor cost incurred, variable din lahat, 300,000. Okay, actually kahit hindi sabihin sa exam, na yung direct materials at saka direct labor, variable po talaga yung dalawa na yan. In direct materials, please wait kung ito po ay may variable or fixed component pa. Ha? So for the indirect labor, that's 80% fixed. So that's 16,000 sa variable cost kasi 20% variable. And 80% fixed, that's 64,000 sa under the fixed cost. And other factory overhead cost, 40% variable, so that's 40 times 150, so that's 60,000. And then 90,000 po ang ating fixed component. And then for selling and administrative expenses, 60 variable. So 60 times 240, so that's 144,000. So 40% ng 240 ay 96,000. So if we get the total of the two, 790,000 for variable cost and 250,000 for fixed cost. Ayan. So that would be for problem number four. Uh, problem number five na for everybody pa rin. Let's go to problem number five. Ayan. So below are the amounts gathered in order to calculate the, the total product cost incurred by Madison Company. We are asked to compute for three items here. Total manufacturing overhead cost, total selling expenses, and administrative expenses. So I'm giving you... Uh, three minutes to solve for this one. Go. Okay, so let's answer this one. We are asked for overhead costs. Overhead, we are asked for the selling expenses and administrative expenses. It's more on, we have to determine saan dapat sila mag-fall. Materials used. 70% indirect materials, ay 70,000 rather. So ang kailangan lang natin ay overhead. So 70,000 po ang ilalagay natin, right? Labor cost, including 80,000 maintenance salary. So that would be 80,000 as part of your overhead. And then supervisor salaries, plant. So 510,000, that's part of your overhead. How about the heat, light, and power ng plant that's kasa that's kasama that's included 135,000 about the sales salaries hindi kasama sa sa selling expenses kasama na natin dito 327,000 advertising kasama po dito 304,000 ayan and then insurance and property taxes ng plant that's part of overhead 143,000 insurance and property taxes corporate offices That's 208,000 under the administrative expenses. And then equipment, depreciation and plant, what's 119,000 for overhead. And equipment depreciation for corporate offices, 92,000 for administrative expenses. All right. 
So total overhead natin would be 1,057,000. So that's the answer for number one. For number two, 327 plus 304, that's 631,000. This is your answer in number two, total selling expenses. And administrative expenses naman po ay 208 plus 92, that's 300,000. Ayan, so that's very good. Let's now go to the first problem under high-low method. So ako po muna, review muna ng high-low method natin. Okay? So we are asked to compute for the variable cost per unit, the total fixed cost, and we are asked to determine the total cost if company produce 6,500 units. So let's na sabi natin, the first step is to look for the highest and lowest levels of activity. Level po ang tingin natin. Highest level is 14,000. Lowest level is 5,400. And then we're going to get the cost at highest level and cost at lowest level. Ayan. So, five steps yung sa, sinabi sa cost accounting. Pero pwede naman na isummarize lang natin into three steps. So, number one, just determine the variable cost per unit. And number two, determine the fixed cost. And number three, determine the cost formula. Basta gawan mo na paraan na makompute mo yung tatlo na yan. For number one, variable cost per unit would be highest level minus lowest level. Yan yung inuuna natin sa ilalim. And then after that, we get the cost at highest level minus the cost at lowest level. Ayan. So magkano po yung, uh, uh, ilan yung highest level natin? Control. Wait lang. Buray mo na So, ang ating uh, highest level ay 14,000 minus lowest level na 5,400. The cost of highest level ay 104, 430 minus uh, 41,000 470, oops, sorry, 41,478, ayan. So, ang answer po natin, ang VCU natin ay 7.32 per unit. Yan po ang ating variable cost per unit. And then to get the fixed, uh, fixed cost, solve na natin ang fixed cost natin. Number two, that would be, it's either you make use of the highest level or the lowest level. Diba ang total cost natin is fixed cost plus VC. So if we solve for fixed cost, that's total cost minus the VC. If we expand the VC, it's VCU. X, variable cost per unit times the number of units. So let's choose the highest level. What's the cost at highest level? It's 104, 430. Minus the VCU na na-compute natin, which is 7.32, times the X, or the number of units, it's 14,000. And then, you will be able to get 1,950 na ating fixed cost. And number three, tulad na sabi natin, establish the cost formula. Total cost is equal to fixed cost plus VCU X. Or, dito po natin ilagay. Total cost is equal to 1950 plus 7.32x. Yun na po yung cost formula natin. And to get the total cost when we produce 6,500 units, you just have to substitute here 6,500. So therefore, ang total cost mo ay 1950 plus 7.32 times 65. That would give you 49,530. Okay. So that's the answer in number three. So number one, ang answer po natin ay 7.32. Number two, 1950. And number three, answer ay 49.530. Okay. Let's go to next problem. Actually, same problem except that if relevant range is from 6,000 to 13,000 units. So, ibig sabihin, ang pipiliin mo lang, lalo na kung ang tanong naman ay pasok sa relevant range, ang kailangan mo establish sa formula ay yung between 6,000 and 13,000 lang. So, what's the highest level now? It's 11,400. Yun yung pinakamataas within the relevant range. 
So ang cost niya at highest level ay 88,718. And then the level na pasok sa ating uh, relevant range, yung lowest ay 88. At ang cost niya ay 68,906. Ayan. So, for number 4, alamin muna natin yung variable cost per unit. That is, ang denominator, 11,4 minus 88. Ang numerator mo ay 88,718 minus... 68906. So ang variable cost per unit mo ay 7.62. And to get your fixed cost, sabi natin, total cost minus VCUX. Diba? Whether you use highest level or lowest level, parehas lang din dapat ang lalabas. So gamitin natin ngayon yung lowest level natin. Total cost at lowest level ay 68906. Minus VCU na 7.62 times X na 8,800. Ayan. So, ang fixed cost po natin ay 1,850. Kaya naman, ito ang answer natin sa number 4. And, to answer number 5, magkano daw yung total cost if 12,000 units ang ipoproduce natin. So, number 5, total cost muna. Yung formula natin is... 1850 plus 7.62x. Substitute natin yung 12,000 dito. Ang answer natin would be 93,290 pesos. So that's your answer in number 5. 93,290. Ayan. Alright. So this one, I need you to answer this one. Uh, by the way, extend lang muna tayo if you don't mind. Extend po muna tayo ng ating uh, time para matapos ng natin mga problems. Kunti lang naman po extension natin. But for this one, last of all, na pasasagutan ko sa inyo, yung mga susunod ako na. So I'm giving you uh, three minutes to answer for problem number two. Alright, so as I've said, you have to be careful in this kind of problem. Kasi meron siyang sinabi dito sa uh, paragraph below the data. So again, an organization has the following total cost at two activity levels. 150,000 at 20,000 units, 200,000 at 36,000 units. Dalawang levels po ang meron tayo dito. Variable cost per unit is constant in this range of activity. So wala tayong problema sa VCU. And there is an increase of 30,000 in the total fixed cost when activity exceeds uh, oops, ayaw matanggal. When the activity exceeds 30,000 units. Ibig sabihin, kung magbabago yung fixed cost mo, ibig sabihin, ibang relevant range pala yung isa. Di ba sabi natin? Ibang relevant range, ibang formula. So ang gagawin po natin, yung una nating equation, uh, 150,000 is equal to, tawagin natin A yung fixed cost plus 20,000 B, B for the variable cost per unit. Hindi natin alam kung magkano yung uh, variable cost at saka yung fixed cost. So number 2 naman, equation 2, 200,000 is equal to A na fixed cost plus 36,000 B. Okay. Pero sabi niya, yung fixed cost, when activity exceeds 30,000, eh, ito nag-exceed. Mag-i-increase ng 30,000 yung fixed cost natin. So your A here is 30,000 greater than the A here. Kaya pwede natin gawin, pwede naman silang same lang, pero mag-add tayo ng 30,000 dito. So when we simplify equation number 2, that would be, pag nilipat natin yung 30,000 sa kabila, 170,000 is equal to A plus 36,000B. Ayan. So combining equation 2 and equation 1, so 150,000 is equal to A plus 20,000B. If we eliminate yung A, ma-minus po natin yung buong equation, that would be 20,000 is equal to 16,000B. In that way, we can compute for the variable cost per unit na 1.25 per unit. That is our BCU. Okay? How about the fixed cost? 
meron tayong dalawang fixed cost. Ang fixed cost natin kapag below 30,000 units, sa substitute lang po natin sa kahit anong equation natin dito and you will be able to get 125,000. Substitute po natin dito yung 125, 1.25. So you will get the fixed cost na 125,000. Okay. So ibig sabihin, ang unang equation natin, total cost is equal to 125,000 plus 1.25x. Okay? Yung pangalawa equation natin na nabuo, cost formula rather, total cost is equal to, di ba mag-increase ng 30,000? So, 155,000 pesos plus 1.25x. Dalawa na yung ating equation kasi dalawa yung relevant range natin. Di ba sabi natin, pag nagbago fix cost, hindi na yan within the relevant range. Kaya naman, Nung tinanong, yung 25,000 units, saan siya papasok? Yung equation number one natin. Kasi yung below 30,000. So, ibig sabihin, dito natin isa substitute yung 25,000 units. And you will get 156,250. Okay? Tinanong sa number two, what is the total cost at an activity level of 34,000 units? So, that's more than 30,000. So, ang gagamitin natin yung equation ay yung mas mataas ang fixed cost. So, substitute natin dito yung 34,000 units. And your answer will be 197,500. Okay? So, be careful with high-low method na problems na merong ibang relevant range. Hindi naman lagi sasabihin ng, ng, ng examiner na may ibang relevant range. Sometimes the way of uh, implying, the way of telling the students na may ibang relevant range ay pag nagbago ang total fixed cost. Di ba sabi natin, total fixed cost constant dapat. Pero pwede bang magbago? Pwede naman, pero ibang relevant range na yon. Hindi na kasi valid yung cost relationship na sinabi natin. Okay, so let's go to number problem number three. This one, since sasanay na tayo, that there could be changes in the total fixed cost. Ibig sabihin, ibang relevant range. So, tingnan po natin. Sabayan niyo po ako mag-solve with problem number three if you're going to get the same answer. Okay. So, your turn has been reviewing its total cost over the last few weeks and has established the following. Given the details above, assume now that the company is aware that fixed costs increase by 600 When production exceeds 200 units, ibig sabihin, may dalawang relevant range na naman tayo. Kapag greater than 200 at saka less than or equal to 200 yung units natin. Basta ang alam natin, yung fixed cost niyan mag increase if uh, mag exceed ng 200 units. So ang tinatawang sa number one, magkano daw yung total cost kapag 420, 420 units ang ipoproduce? Magkano din naman total cost kapag ang production ay 170 units? So if you can see, yung number one, dapat yung equation na mabubuo mo dito, equation A ang gagamitin natin. Yung number two, yung equation B ang gagamitin natin. So dalawang high-low ang gagawin po natin. Unayin na natin yung greater than 200,000. So... Ang VCU natin, if that's the case, would be highest level. Lahat ng more than 200. So that would be 220 na lowest. Ang highest natin ay 480. Diba? So ang cost at highest ay 54. Ang cost at lowest ay 3450. Sir, bakit hindi 120? Kasi ibang relevant range po yan. Okay? So hindi mo siya isasama. Gusto ko lang tingnan niyo po itong uh, week 5 and week 6. 5-4 ang cost ng week 5. 5-7 ang cost ng week 6. Kahit na ang units produced is only 380. Ito yung sinasabi natin na outlier. Hindi naman siya yung pinakamaraming units pero pinakamataas ang cost niya for whatever reason na nangyari during week 6. Okay, so this is an outlier. So kaya naman, if we perform the ILO method, so the highest level is 480 minus the lowest level na 220. Tapos ang cost natin at highest level 
ay 5,400 minus 3,450 at lowest level. So the answer is 7.50 per unit. That's our variable cost per unit. Ang fixed cost natin would be, well, just consider the highest level, 5,4 minus 7.5 times 480. So your answer would be 1,800. Ang formula natin ay total cost is equal to 1.8 plus 7.5x. So ang question po natin dito, 420 units. Substitute, 420 here. So the answer is 4,950. Okay? So be careful. Kapag wala naman itong paragraph na to, ang simple lang ang buhay natin. 480 and 120. Ay kaso may sinabi dito. So ingatan po natin ha. Ayan. So, that's answer. That's the answer for number one. For number two, hindi pwedeng gamitin mo yung same formula na to. Hindi siya pwedeng gamitin. Gagawa ka ng bagong formula. Anong formula? Lahat na may kinalaman below 200 units. Kaya lang sir, isa lang yung data natin below 200. 120 to 160. It's okay. Kasi isa na lang naman yung nawawala. Dahil yung fixed cost at variable cost Yung fixed cost, meron na. Paano nangyari? Sabi natin, the company is aware that fixed cost increase by 600 when production exceeds 200 units. Ibig sabihin, if we are now talking about 200 below 200 units, kung ang fixed cost mo dati ay 1.8, ang fixed cost mo ay daming zero. Ha? Ang fixed cost mo dati ay 1.8. Pag more than 200 ay 1.8, ibig sabihin, i-minus mo yung 600 1,200 yung fixed cost mo kapag mas mababa sa 200 yung units natin. Okay? So variable cost na lang yung nawawala. So kaya lang naman tayo nag 2 points kasi dalawa yung nawawala. Kung isa na lang nawawala, we only need 1 point. Ito na lang po. So this time, variable cost yung nawawala. So total cost is equal to FC plus VCUX. Alam na natin kung ano yung total cost natin. So total cost ay 2160, right? Ang fixed cost natin ay 12. Plus ang VCU natin, yung po inaanap natin, ang X natin ay 120 units produced. Ayan. So ang VCU natin po ay 8 pesos per unit. Ayan po. Kaya naman, ang cost formula mo to answer number 2 would be total cost is equal to 1,200 na fix plus 8x. Okay, if we substitute 170 here, so ang total cost mo would be equal to 2,560. So that's the answer in number 2. Okay. Alright. So, if you have a question, nilagay lang po sa chat box. And we are now down to the last problem na i-introduce lang natin si this square method na siya rin yung mag, naman yung lalabas sa answer natin kapag linear regression. Actually, mag-iiba mag sila ng formula pero sa inabahaba ng mga formula ng linear regression, di isa lang din naman ang sagot. So pag tinanong ka ng linear regression, tinanong ka ng least square method, alam mo yung least square, least square na lang gawin, gawin mo kasi same lang talaga yung lalabas sa sagot. Okay? For this one, please allow me to discuss problem number four tapos uh, Extend lang po talaga tayo ng content. So, the following information summarizes total production cost and number of units of product produced by Rosalind Company over the last six months. So, using the high low method and using the least square method, determine the cost formula and what would be the total cost if we produce three five units. Ko compare lang natin yung dalawang methods natin. Same lang naman yung questions natin. Okay. So, for high low method. Perform lang natin. So, highest level, where is our highest level? Ito, 4, 2. Diba? So, lowest level natin ay 3,000. Magkatabi lang sila. So, 15,000 and 12,000 yung cost natin na kukunin. So, variable cost per unit would be equal to 4,200 minus 3,000. Ang numerator mo ay 15,000 minus your 12,000 pesos. Okay. So the answer is 2.50 or 250 per unit. Ayan. 
And for your fixed cost, o lowest level naman ang kunin natin ngayon. So that's 12,000 minus uh, VCUX, 2.50 times X of 3,000. Okay. So the answer is 4,500 pesos. So ang cost formula natin to answer number one, total cost is 4,500 plus 2.50 X. And then the X here, substitute natin. Ang tinatanong ay 3,500 units. Magkano daw ang total cost? If we substitute, we're going to get the amount of 30,250. That's the total cost. That is using the high-low method. So madali lang pag si high-low. <coughs> What if this time? We make use of the least square method. All right. Using the least square method, una, di ba ang formula natin kasi para madaling matandaan, y is equal to a plus bx. Where in a is your fixed cost, b is your variable cost per unit, and x is the number of units. Okay. Ngayon, i-multiply lang natin both sides by x, and then magiging xy, right? Pag multiply both sides ng x. So magiging ax, tama? Plus bx squared. Ganyan ang ginawa sa least square method. Ngayon, pag in-apply natin yung statistics, whenever we get the summation ng mga variable, uh, we can, I mean, we can apply the summation sa mga variable, pero pag coefficient po, itong constant na number, we can only multiply with the number of items. So what do I mean? Convert natin sa stat, ha? Summation of y is equal to, since coefficient lang to, N, A ang ilalagay natin. Number of items times the, uh, itong A na inaanap natin. Plus, di ba ito may, may coefficient sa variable? Coefficient yung B, constant kasi, tapos variable yung X. Now, so B, summation of X. Now, that is how we establish the first formula. Okay? The second formula would be, Summation na nito mga ito. Eh, parehas naman po na variable yung x and y. So, summation of x, y. Okay? Tapos, a and x, may, var may coefficient, may variable. So, pwede natin ko with a, summation of x. Plus, di ba, b, x squared. So, pwede b, summation of x squared. Now, supply na lang natin kung ano hinihingi ng mga formulas na to. So una, sabi nung number one, kunin natin yung summation of y. Alin ba ang y dito? Ito po yung total cost natin. At ang uh, independent po ay yung x natin, yung number of units produced. Okay, summation of y daw. So we just have to get the sum of y and that is 79,500 pag kinuha natin total niyan. Okay. How about n? n is 6. There are 6 items here. How about A? Yun po yung nawawala. How about the B? Nawawala din po siya. Dalawa rin yung nawawala. Just like the high-low method, dalawa yung nawawala, yung fixed cost at saka variable cost per unit. Okay? Pero yung pag-establish kasi ng formula, medyo iba lang sa least square method. Now, so meron na tayong B. Ay, what? Nawawala yung B to summation of X. We just have to get the sum of X. And that is 20,900. So I think we can establish the first uh, formula. So buuin natin. Formula number one, 79,000. Uh, move lang, lang natin ng konti. That's 79,500, di ba? Summation of y is equal to NA. So 6A plus so B summation of x. Ang summation of x ay 20,900. B. So that's the first equation. So A and B ano wala. We need one more para masolve natin yung dalawang unknowns. So gamitin natin itong second. Okay? Summation of X, Y. So dapat pag multiplyin mo na natin si X and Y, ibigay natin yung niin ng formula. X, Y. So 3,000 times 12,000, that's 36M. I'll just use M ha, to make it short. 42 times 15, that's 63M. 4... 1,000 and 16,000, that's 64M million. 3, 4 times 13,500, that's 45.9 million. 
And then 3, 2 times 11, 5. That's 36.8 million. And then 3, 1 times 11, 5. That's 35 million. 650,000. So 35.65 million. If we get the total or the summation of X, Y, that would give us 281,000. 281 million rather. 350,000. Ayan. So that's the summation of X, Y. So meron tayo. Summation of X, Y. A, nawawala. Summation of X, meron na? Yes. Ito pong 20,900. B, nawawala. Summation of x squared, wala pa. I-square mo pala yung x, pati square So, 3 million times, ay 3,000 squared, that's 9 million. 4 to squared, that's 17.64 million. 4 squared, 16 million. 3.4, 3,400 squared, that's 11.56 million. And then 3, 2 squared, that's 10.24 million. And uh, 3, 1 squared, that's 9.61 million. Ang total po natin ng x squared ay 74 million 50,000. Ayan. So kompleto na po lahat na kailangan natin, we just have to establish the second formula. So that would be, ano yung isa? Summation of XY, nasan yun? Ito po, 281. So, 281,000 million, rather, 281 million, 350,000 is equal to A, summation of X. So, 20,900 X. Ay, no, no, no. Uh, A, rather. Ah, ano ba yan? A, ayan, plus... B, summation of X squared. Ang X squared po ay 74 million. So, 74 million, 50,000 B. Ayan. So, we have two equations to unknown. So, we just have to either solve this by elimination or by substitution. Ako, pinipili ko lagi by elimination. So, ang gagawin lang natin, <clears throat> eliminate natin si A na lang. So, multiply uh, the first equation. Itong first equation natin. This is the second. Multiply natin first equation na 20,900 over 6. Why? Para itong una equation, pag dinivide ng 6, magiging A. Pag multiply ng 2,900, so magiging 20,900 A. So pag pinag-minus natin sila, parehas na po sila. If we do that, ang equation 1 this time would be equation, new equation 1 pag dinistribute natin, 276,000 900 million, 925,000. Yan. That's 79,500 times 2,900 over 6. And then the, the other one is 20,900A. Bakit ito? 6 times 2,900 over 6. Okay. Plus, how about this one? 2,900 times 2,900 over 6. That's 72,801,667 million. B. Ayan. So, if we deduct the entire equation 1, ang makuha po natin dito ay 4,425,000. Pagdating sa A, cancel. Yun nga yung gusto natin magkawin, ma-eliminate. Ang may iwan na lang ay yung B component. 1, 2, 4, 8, 333, B. Ayan. So, ang B natin, if we divide... So, 3.5447. So, this is our variable cost per unit. Ang haba, no? Pero ganyan talaga si this square method kapag minanuman natin. Paano makukuha si A? E di substitute natin itong nakuha natin B dito sa uh, kahit sa unang equation na lang. And you are going to get A na 902.53. Establish the formula. Total cost is equal to 902.53 plus 3.5447x. Okay? If we substitute 3,500 here, ito ang puwing tinatanong. Ang total cost would be 13,308.98. Okay? Let us just compare with high-low method. Pag bumalik tayo, it's 13,250. 
sa high low. Pero pag sa least square method, 13,308. Ang lapit lang naman. Pero tingnan nyo po yung component. Balik po tayo. 4,500 ang fixed cost. Against 902.53 na fixed cost. Kaya yung least square method. Balik tayo. 250 or 2.5 ang variable cost per unit kapag high low. Pero kapag least square method, 3.54 ang variable cost per unit. Magkaiba. Pero alin na mas paniniwalaan natin? The least square method. Okay? Ayan. Sorry, medyo nag-overtime na. I just need mga, ano, mga five more minutes para ma-introduce ko lang si scatter diagram. Si scatter diagram kasi, bawa, diba ito yung y na, ay, muntik na pumaling. y-axis, x-axis. y circles And then ito yung units, for example. Okay? Ngayon, kaya scatter diagram, pag inagproduce kang gantong units, itong cost mo. Pag itong units na to, ito cost mo. Ibig sabihin, from the term itself, naka-scatter talaga yung points or kalap yung data natin. Hindi natin alam kung ano ba talaga yung talaga, uh, behavior ng ating cost. But if you look at all the points, Parang you can draw the best fit line. Parang ito siya. Ayan. This line for me, ah, represents yung best fit. Uh, yung, yung, kung baga, line that, that represents yung pinakagitna na lahat ng mga points na yan. So, ibig sabihin, in a company, dapat merong somebody who could estimate the best fit line. So, ang tanong ngayon, paano mo kukuha yung cost formula dito? Ang gagawin natin, we will get the slope. Diba y is equal to a plus bx. Asan yung slope? Ito. Diba ang line y plus mx plus b nung algebra natin? The b here is actually the a here. Yung fixed cost. The m here is slope is the variable cost per unit or b here. Now, get the slope. How do we get the slope? The rise over run. Rise over run. Or the slope of the line is equal to the change in y over the change in x. Ano ba yung change in y natin? Ito po, change in y. Kunin natin yung magnitude niyan. Change in x mula dito ang nandito. Kunin natin yung magnitude niyan. Kaya naman po, hindi ito binibigay sa problem sa strategic cost management. Kasi nga, ang hirap mag-graph mag tapos dapat clear yung points para pag ma mapag-minus mo yung change in y at saka yung change in x. Let's say for example, lumabas ay 3.5. Ayan. So that is, that is already your variable cost per unit. How can I get my fixed cost or yung B na to or yung A na malaki dito sa cost formula natin? Yung fixed cost natin. How do we get? That is your y-intercept. Ibig sabihin kung saan siya nag-cross kay y-axis. Ito po. Kung ano yung value nito, siya na mismo yung fixed cost natin. Di ba? So meaning, kung nakita mo yan na 1,200, ibig sabihin na cost formula is total cost is equal to 1,200 plus 3.5x. If we substitute 3,500 here, magkano magiging uh, cost natin? So that would be 3.5 times 3.5 plus 1,2. The answer natin ay... 30,450. Pero ang gusto lang natin sabihin dito is you just have to uh, first establish the best fit line. Ang problema lang dito, eh, what if hindi mo, iba-iba tayo ng interpretation, alin yung best fit line? Yung iba maaaring pag ganyan ang interpretation niya, iba pag ganyan, iba pag ganun. So maaaring iba-iba. That makes scatter diagram weaker as compared to linear regression. Pero ang tanong, so malino na tayo yung linear regression and this square method sa kanilang tatlo, pinaka-accurate. Ang huling tanong ko na lang, alin sa dalawa, high-low method versus scatter diagram ang mas accurate sa pag-compute ng estimate cost natin? Last question ko na po yan. Alin ang mas accurate? Patingin nga. 
Nakita natin yung paggawa ng hilo method. Nakita natin yung scatter diagram. Ang tanong, at the end of the day, gamitin yung dalawang method, alin ang mas paniniwalaan natin? Alin ang mas accurate sa dalawa? Okay. So, ang mas accurate sa dalawa, uh, as, as kanina, is a scatter diagram. Ang reason is, ang hilo method po kasi, ay nag-consider lang ng two points. Totoo na nag-estimate -e tayo ng best fit lines sa scatter diagram. But when you do that, you consider all the points pa rin. Yun nga lang, possible na lumihis ng konti, pero unlike the high-low method, dalawang points lang ang kinonsider. Okay? So, sa scatter diagram, lahat ng points kinonsider. And that makes scatter diagram more accurate than high-low method. Pero sa kanilang tatlo, ang ranking, pinaka-accurate, si least square or linear regression, sumunod si scatter diagram at ang pinakahuli, yung pinaka-simpling isol, yung high-low method. Thank you.